So, on the count of three, here we go. They used to call me Easy D, Easy D, Easy D. <laughs> and this is five easy questions. Five easy questions. It's showtime. I'm showtime all the way, baby. Turn the switch on. They used to call me Easy D, Easy D, Easy D, Easy D. This is Danny Easy D Dorman. Five easy questions, part two. I This is such a fascinating conversation. I had to pick it up. And I want to thank my guest tonight for allowing me the time to do this, DJ Clientel. What's up with you, man? Hey, it's good to do it, brother. It's good chopping it up, man. We just we just two brothers talking, man. That's all that, it is, you know. That, that is what this shtick is all about, man. Two cats talking at the end That's of it. the day. But yeah. man, you when you <clears throat> when we dropped off, uh, you were talking about people who mentored you, people who guided you. There was a name in particular, um, two-part question, three-part question, the gentleman, the, um, um, the person, how you met, and what was his influence? So, yeah, so it was uh, Professor John Henry Clark. Um, he was the uh, lead researcher um, and really good friend an advisor to Malcolm X. Um, and we met once he was given a, a, a lecture, he was given a speech. And uh, after the speech, I approached him and we you know, started talking and everything and uh, exchanged, exchanged numbers and information. And from that point on, man, we just you know, struck up a friendship. You know, I'd call him on the phone and he was always accessible to me. Uh, he would always be giving me advice uh, he, I mean, we talk about everything, but, um, you know, I, I always appreciated the personal stories, you know, that he would tell and the sort of the strategy, um, the overall sort of arcing strategies that he would talk about in terms of what Malcolm X's mindset was, the OAAU and, and that whole formation and just the, the, the bigger wider scope of, you know, terms like Pan-Africanism and, you know, Afrocentricity and, and sort of um, the African diaspora and what our sort of responsibility is to um, the future of, <clears throat> of society, right? And it, it gave me an understanding or it helped me to get a clearer picture of what my responsibility is right now that's not to say that everybody um has the same responsibility but i think there is a certain sort of standard or a, a certain level that we all should should you know aspire to and then wherever we go from there is is just icing on the cake so um, yeah, all, all kinds of advice, you know, that he would give me, but I, I love the stories that he would tell about his personal relationship with, with Malcolm X, but then also just the jewels he dropped in terms of, okay, this is how we made our moves and here's why. And it's like, wow, that makes a whole bunch of sense to me. And so out of that, I recognize what, you know, what my responsibility was in terms of the tools that I had in, in my toolbox and what I could do to help. So that's that's what it was about, man. Oh, man. That, that's the thing about five easy questions, too, man. You know, brother gets a phone call right in the middle of a conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, it's all right. I'm a bill collector. <laughs> you know, black man in America, you know I'm going to get yeah. that call every once in a while. Get those Billy calls, man. The yeah, Billy calls. those Billy calls. Billy's calling. <laughs> yeah, who's calling? Oh, he ain't here. Uh, that actually is going to lead into this question as we were talking. When I was a kid, it was all about the whole, you know, uh, singing in harmony, the United Colors of Pendleton, we weren't trying to cancel each other out. You know, uh, you said what you said, I said what I said, we either liked it or not. Yeah. Uh, you know, maybe, maybe we went into fisticuffs about it, whatever, whatever. Yeah. Um, you look at today though, and you know, 
you can't even what I had just done. And that is not a slam against, you know, a, a particular race or anything else, but the, these delicate little flowers now, uh, right. you know, they, they, dude, they, they tried to stop Mr. Potato Head. I was like, what the, f I was tripping. I thought that was a joke. Right. Well, know? yeah, Mr. Potato Head has gone uh, gender neutral. Yeah. And, and um, hey, listen, you know, I'm, I'm the kind of guy that I believe in inclusion. I believe that everybody has, you know, like I said, live your truth and, and whatnot. However, it's important <clears throat> that we do recognize that we are human beings. Um, you might catch a person, man, on, on their worst day, you know, and they may say some things or uh, do something that, you know, to be honest, is is not the worst thing in the world and the question is should they be completely you know erased everything taken away for you know one mistake or, or one or two situations where you caught them you know in a bad moment or on a bad day and and it works both ways right it right. works both ways because where where's the line and where do we kind of pause and say all right human beings are flawed you know inherently we are flawed all of us we all make mistakes we all have situations and circumstances and perceptions and you know my perception about something may be slightly different than yours or whatever it is but why not create opportunities for for dialogue for exchange for um a coming a meeting of the minds if you will or at least um an an, an opportunity to have conversations you know, about things that affect us or things that maybe we have grown up culturally right. and, and learned. But I think it's also another component that we sort of miss, which is, you know, bad news travels five times faster than good news. So you can do 20 good things and you do one bad thing and that will go everywhere much faster than those 20 good things that you've done. And somehow that bad thing seems to carry a lot more weight than all the other good stuff. So I think it's important that we sort of put things in perspective and, and take things in totality and in context versus, you know, just pouncing on a person and wanting to completely just cancel out everything that they've done, all the good stuff that they've done. Because, you know, maybe they've made a couple of, you know, poor decisions or some had some poor choices. I don't know, man. But, yeah, I, I agree that the culture nowadays is to the point where um, it has created some very heightened sensitivities and about things that can be mitigated in different ways. And I don't have the answers on how to slow that train down or get to a point where, again, we go, whoa. Um, Let's have a conversation about this, a real one. And this was my understanding of what I was saying versus what you understood, how you received it. I'm sorry. Um, I've learned from this mistake. Can we move forward without completely tearing down my legacy? And that's, that's where I think we have to kind of go. Yeah, and I agree wholeheartedly. I, and I'll even add to that, looking for problems that aren't there. Like I said, Mr. Potato Head, I, yeah. what did he do <laughs> to, to get somebody's attention to the point where, yeah. yeah. Now, and the thing was, there was, there's actually a Mrs. Potato Head. So it's not hey. as though, it's not like Mr. Peanut, who I guess he's going to be on the rocks pretty soon, too. Um, yeah, I think they're going to remove the Mr. from that. Uh, that's that I've heard that I, it could have been a joke, but I've heard that it's that's a possibility. Yeah, it's but that's again looking for a problem that just isn't there. It's spending, I can't imagine, I can't even imagine, dude, I can't imagine waking up and thinking, you know what, eh, god damn, Mr. Potato Head. Listen, man, you know, I, I'm I am a staunch supporter of. A woman's right to to be in an egalitarian, equitable society with men. I'm I'm I fight for social justice 
for any and all people, you know, I believe in that. Right. But I also grew up in an era where there was a Mr. Potato Head, where there was a Miss Piggy, where, um, you know, some of the tropes and references in the dynamics of male female relationships, you know, were defined a different way. But I had enough awareness in my head to know that um, equality is a different kind of animal. I can see a person for who they are and meet them where they are versus, you know, being so afraid to, to address them. And, and I grew up in an era where certain lines and distinctions were made. So I don't see how, you know, if you completely change the landscape with, you know, um, trying to sort of erase or really contain and control terminology, how that's going to be beneficial, you know, in, in the long run. I mean, I get that people say, well, if you don't use certain terminologies or if you teach kids to perceive things a certain way, then they'll grow up more tolerant. But my point is, hey, I'm tolerant, you know, right. at least I like to think that I am. And, and I know a lot of my peers who grew up with me were just as tolerant and, and continuously fight for ju social justice. The generation before me, a lot of people are tolerant and, and continue to fight for equality and, and social justice. So, um, yeah, it, it's, it's, a, it's a weird situation. It's almost like there are people really looking to try and sort of control the way we make our decisions and choices and the way we think. So we got to be careful about that side of it as well. Yeah, it, it's not a zero sum game. And to put your morals or ethics or whatever um, of today back on, you know, something from the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, and, you know, try to look through a prism of today back then. Laughing is an example. How come Milton doesn't interrupt you? I had a deal worked out. They only interrupt the straight men. <laughs> that was the deal. Um, I was watching somebody put it on Facebook, and I looked at it. And the first thing I thought of was they couldn't play that today. Oh, uh, Benny Hill. Benny Hill would, would, would never make it in, in, in today's society. Oh, bend down, girls, touch your toes. I'm gonna show you where the wild goose goes. <laughs> Uh, Monty, Mon Monty Python, those, those kinds of, um, you know, that highbrow slapstick <clears throat> kind of humor. I mean, I can see the Three Stooges not making it, you know, in today's society. Oh, what's the idea? Well, oh, oh, and you kind of have to have an understanding of the era that it was created in and see it from that perspective. You may not always agree with what was being done. And yes, you have a right to say, well, all right, this is the way they were doing it then based on the perception of that. Right. But, but to completely just try and erase it is, that's a whole nother dangerous kind of, I don't know, that, that's, that's going the other way. In, in right, that. no, I, and I agree. Um, you know, as you were talking about cartoons i thought about steamboat willie and um uh, what was the other one um uh, not uncle T uncle tom's cabin maybe that's what it is um you know and and of course it was looking at it today and this is as we're talking i'm thinking maybe it is a generational thing um i'm a child a teen of the 70s and if i look back at how we were treated back in the 40s and 50s, yeah, I'd sit there and say, oh, hell no, I wouldn't let yeah. that happen to me. Right. But then again, I wasn't there. And we understood that it was going to be all white, and we were very happy to buy a home here. Before coming to Levitt Town, did you have any contact with Negroes? Well, I came from a small town where we didn't have any colored people. And in the paper where they have two colored uh, school teachers now. And What's wrong with that? I do not like, I, I have uh, two daughters and two sons. And if there's too many colored people around here, I definitely will get out. I'm not thinking my, well, I don't want her associating with colored people.
Yeah. And you know why? Uh, uh, why we a, as a people were more tolerant or more subservient, whatever the case may be. Uh, at least for me, I try not to look through that lens because I wasn't there. I could only say I, I, that ain't gonna happen today. Yeah, because but, change happens <clears throat> in in slow increments, right? Right. It, it's a gradual thing. Uh, we, you know, we'd love to wake up tomorrow and everything would be just completely flipped around and there's, you know, equality across the board and we don't have, you know, uh, uh, sort of this lopsided um, economic, you know, uh, you know, control that's happening where a small few are controlling a large part of the economy and, and, and the masses are sort of suffering, you know, continuously. We'd love to have that change tomorrow, but change really takes place in gradual, slow increments. And that's just the nature of the beast. And we can see the progress. We can see if you're going back and learn the history and understand it for what it is, you can, you can see that gradual you know, progress. And yes, we should continue to fight, but um, to take one era out of context and then go, you know, if that was me, I wouldn't have, it's 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 a difficult thing to say to criticize those folks because you don't know you know what they've gone through. Uh, so I I definitely got to cut it short. Otherwise I'll, I'll be hitting another Zoom, man. I, <laughs> obviously we get chopped up all day. Yeah, that that that's not a problem, man. And uh, like I said, I'll I'll send you my contact information. Uh, you know, let's keep in touch, dude. Seriously, man. please, man. Please do. Definitely, All right, man. brother. I, I certainly will. I'm not going to do the five easy questions anymore because I'm already going to be chopping this up and putting it here and there. <laughs> right. <laughs> so right. I'll talk to you later, fam. All right. Take care, man. All right, man. Late. They used to call me Easy D.